Hey there, my amazing truth-seeking friends. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Welcome to another episode of Untold Royal Secrets. Now, alrighty folks, get comfortable, because today we're diving into something absolutely explosive that's making waves across both sides of the pond. And trust me, this tea is piping hot. Now, you know how our favorite former cable TV actress always seems to think she's entitled to everything under the sun? Well, it looks like reality might finally be catching up with the Sussex Circus and in the most delicious way possible. So now, let's talk about this bombshell situation involving Harry's visa status in the US. Now, isn't it just perfectly ironic that the couple who wanted to be financially independent might find their American dream turning into a nightmare? And who's at the center of this potential shakeup? None other than Rick Grinnell, who might become the next Secretary of State under a potential Trump administration. And oh my goodness, my dear viewers, let me tell you, Rick Grinnell did not hold back. His description of our favorite Z-lister as the classic American woke progressive who doesn't want to do the work but is outraged she doesn't get the freebies is absolutely spot on. Finally, someone in a position of power saying what we've all been thinking. Remember how she waltzed into the royal family thinking she'd revolutionize a thousand-year-old institution in five minutes? And now look at her, hiding away in Montecito, desperately trying to stay relevant with, wait for it, jam. Yes, you heard that right. From wanting to be the modern face of monarchy to selling jam. You couldn't make this stuff up. Let's take a moment to appreciate the pure poetry of this situation. Here's someone who convinced Prince Harry to abandon his family, his duties, his entire heritage, to move to California for the American dream. And now that very dream might be hanging by a thread. Talk about karma. And speaking of Harry, oh poor Harry, Remember when he was the cheeky, charming prince who served his country proudly? The one who started the Invictus Games, who worked alongside his brother for mental health causes. Now, he's reduced to being a plus one at his wife's jam-selling ventures. How the mighty have fallen. You know what really gets me? While all this is happening, look at the contrast with our beloved Princess of Wales. Catherine, who's been recovering from surgery, has shown nothing but grace, dignity, and strength. No drama, no attention-seeking, just quiet resilience. That's what real royalty looks like. And let's talk about these gift packages being sent to Hollywood. Is anyone else getting desperate vibes here? It's like watching someone trying to get invited to the cool kids' table in high school. Remember when she had access to actual royal palaces? Now, she's reduced to sending jam to B-list celebrities, hoping they'll mention her name somewhere. The timing of all this is just chef's kiss perfect. While she's busy playing Martha Stewart with her American Riviera Orchard, and can we talk about that pretentious name for a minute? There's serious discussion about her husband's right to stay in the country. Talk about misplaced priorities. Let's rewind a bit and look at the bigger picture. This is the same person who sat with Oprah and made all those accusations against the royal family. The same person who claimed she was silenced while never actually stopping talking. The same person who said she didn't know anything about the royal family, yet somehow knew exactly how to maximize her brief time there for future Netflix deals. And now, here we are. The mighty have fallen so far that they're reduced to sending gift baskets around Hollywood, desperately trying to stay relevant. Meanwhile, the real royals, William, Catherine, King Charles, and Queen Camilla continue to serve with dignity, class, and actual purpose. You know what's really telling? The complete silence from all those Hollywood A-listers who attended their wedding. Where are they now? Where's George Clooney? Where's Oprah? Where are all those celebrities who were so quick to jump on the bandwagon when they thought they were getting in with royalty? 
Let's talk about this American Riviera orchard business for a moment. First of all, could she have picked a more pretentious name? It's giving me serious, I watched one episode of Under the Tuscan Sun, and now I'm Martha Stewart vibes. And jam, really? From the woman who wanted to modernize the monarchy, we get jam. But here's where it gets really interesting. And my regular viewers know I always dig deeper. This whole lifestyle brand launch is happening right when there's serious discussion about Harry's visa status. Coincidence? I think not. It's classic deflection tactics from the Sussex playbook. Remember how they handled the bullying allegations from palace staff? Release something bigger to distract from the real issue. How about when questions were raised about their use of private jets while preaching about climate change? Suddenly, there was a new photo op or interview to distract us. Speaking of those bullying allegations, isn't it interesting how they've never been properly addressed? Just like how they never properly addressed the questions about Harry's visa application and his drug use admissions in spare. It's always deflect, deny, and distract. And let's talk about Rick Grenell's comments for a moment. This isn't just some random commentator. This is someone who could potentially have real power over the Sussex's future in America. And he sees right through the facade. When he says she doesn't want to do the work, but expects the freebies, he's speaking from experience in high-level government positions. Think about it. This is exactly what we saw during her brief time as a working royal. She wanted all the perks of royalty without any of the actual work. Remember all those ribbon-cutting ceremonies she turned her nose up at? Those same ceremonies that Catherine, Sophie, and Princess Anne do without complaint because they understand it's about the people they're serving, not about themselves, and now she's sending out gift baskets to Hollywood? Talk about coming full circle. From sending her old publicity headshots, to casting directors, to sending jam, to celebrities. The more things change, the more they stay the same, right? But what's really fascinating is watching the Hollywood reaction, or should I say, lack thereof. Remember when they first moved to America? Everyone was falling over themselves to welcome them. Ellen, Oprah, James Corden. They couldn't get enough of the royal rebels. Now, crickets, absolute crickets. And let's consider the timing of all this. While Catherine was recovering from surgery, showing incredible dignity and privacy, what were the Sussexes doing? Trying to launch a lifestyle brand. While King Charles was dealing with his health issues with quiet strength, what were they doing? Playing at being influencers. The contrast couldn't be more stark. On one side, you have working royals who understand duty, service, and dignity. On the other, you have, well, jam. And not just any jam. Jam being desperately hawked to celebrities in the hope of staying relevant. You know what really shows the difference? When Catherine takes time off for surgery, the whole country rallies behind her, sending genuine well wishes. When our Montecito resident launches a new brand, people are either indifferent or rolling their eyes. And let's talk about Harry and all this. The man who once had one of the highest approval ratings in the royal family. The soldier prince. The people's prince. Now, he's potentially facing visa issues while his wife sends out jam samples. If this were a Netflix series, we'd call it too far-fetched. What's really telling is how they handle these challenges. Instead of addressing issues head on, we get more smoke and mirrors, more PR stunts, more attempts to distract and deflect. It's like watching a really bad magic show where we can all see the tricks. And here's something my regular viewers know I always point out, look at the pattern. Whenever there's negative press or a serious issue to address, suddenly there's a new project, a new initiative, a new something to try and grab headlines. It's PR 101, but it's getting so obvious it's almost embarrassing. Remember when they first left the royal family? They were going to change the world with Archerwell. 
Then it was Netflix documentaries. Then Harry's book. Now we're down to... Jam. The trajectory is rather telling, isn't it? But what really gets me is thinking about what could have been. Imagine if they'd stayed within the royal family, worked alongside William and Catherine, supported King Charles in his new role. Imagine the genuine good they could have done instead of this constant chase for relevance. And you know what's really sad? They're ghost children. Archie and Lilibet, I mean, if they even exist, could have been growing up alongside their cousins, being part of one of the most historic families in the world. Instead, they're being raised in this bizarre bubble of celebrity wannabes and Instagram influencers. Let's not forget, this is the same couple who claimed they left the UK for privacy. Now, they're literally sending gift baskets to celebrities begging for attention. Make it make sense. The irony of their situation would be hilarious if it wasn't so tragic. They had it all. Respect, position, purpose. And they traded it for what? A chance to sell jam to Hollywood? To become just another celebrity couple trying to stay relevant? And now, with this potential visa situation looming, it's like watching a house of cards starting to wobble. All those grand plans, all those Netflix deals and Spotify contracts. What happens if Harry can't stay in the US? Has anyone thought this through? Meanwhile, back in Britain, the real royals continue doing what they've always done, serving the people with dignity and grace. No drama, no headlines, just duty. Catherine will return to her duties when she's recovered. William continues to support both his wife and the monarchy, and King Charles leads with quiet strength. The contrast between the working royals and the Montecito crew couldn't be more stark. One group understands that being royal is about service, not celebrity. The other, well, they're selling jam. To all my wonderful viewers, thank you for joining me for another deep dive into this royal saga. It's like watching a Shakespeare play unfold in real time, complete with tragedy, comedy, and yes, even jam. If you've enjoyed this analysis, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Remember, we're not just watching history. We're watching what happens when someone tries to use the monarchy as a stepping stone to celebrity and fails spectacularly. Stay royal, my friends, and I'll see you in the next video. God save the king and keep strong, Catherine. The real royals and real royal fans are all behind you. And hey, who knows? Maybe next time we'll be discussing what other condiments our favorite former cable TV actress tries to sell to stay relevant. Keep watching this space, my royal friends. Something tells me this story is far from over. Peace out.